Hey everybody, it's Dr. RG and it's Monday night. Welcome to the Ask Dr. RG Courageous Conversations Connect series. I am yours truly, Dr. RG, founder and CEO of Faith Inc., which stands for Family and Individual Therapeutic Healing and co-founder of Connections Matter LLC with my husband, Morgan E. Wilson Jr. This is Mindful Mondays. We bring you content, uh, we bring you trending topics, we bring you uh, interesting dialogue, and all uh, in the name of having courageous conversations that connect. So again, tonight is no different. One of the things, that, of course, I always ask you guys to do is STLC for me, uh, share, 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 uh, tag, like, and comment. And as you see, I am at home because there was supposed to be a big thunderstorm and supposed to be raining. I don't know if we can really trust the uh, the weather people too much. Um, no shade to uh, my good friend, friend Al Roker, uh, who is in New York uh, and you know has been doing this for a long time. But this seems like sometimes they don't get it right, or maybe it's just that. Mother Nature has her own mind, and so you can track the, uh, the system all you want, but sometimes it changes course very, very much like life. And uh, interesting enough, we are, uh, we're talking about all this month's storms. Uh, so changing course is uh, a part of that, that process. I am in my living room. I have, uh, it's, it's still pretty hot and humid, so... I hope it, let me know guys, if you hear background noise, I've got the windows open for the circulation of the air. Uh, and I've got my fan on, blowing on me. I've got my tank top. I'm a little bit relaxed uh, tonight uh, because I'm in the comfort of my own home and I'm not in the office. I was in the office a little bit earlier. Uh, but you know, we're just hanging out together. I've got my cold, cold, cold water because uh, it's hot. And we all need to stay hydrated. Uh, and so tonight we are, well, let's start off by saying that, one, I welcome you and I thank you for joining. I don't take it lightly that you guys are joining. Send me some thumbs up, some smiley faces, some hearts if you are on board for this conversation. We like to have here at Faith Inc. A, and Connections Matter a dialogue, not a monologue. So we're all in this conversation together. Tonight we are talking about the same Theme, similar theme, weathering the storm. Are you in a hurricane? Are you in a hurricane season of your life? But it's a little bit of twist tonight. And the reason why I decided to do a twist to it was because I got a lot of posts yesterday when I was hanging out with Bay, the hubby, right? Thank you for the thumbs up. Uh, hey Sonny, hey Solange. Solange, I thought you I thought you were on vacation. Are you back from the islands? You you world traveler, you. Um, uh, if you are. I want to know how it was and did you have good weather for your vacation? Uh, Solange, just so you guys know, is my uh, stylist. Uh, she uh, gives me my natural styles. I'm going to try something new the next time. So uh, watch out. She's amazing. Uh, she is the proprietor of uh, Solara's Natural Hair Salon on Ogant's Avenue. And so if you like my hair, if you, you know, and it kind of changes. What's cool about this natural hairstyle is it starts out one way and then two weeks later, the humidity gets to it and kind of grows and it changes. But a lot of people have said that they liked it. I've referred a lot of people to her. So anyway, thank you Solange for, um, you know, working with me uh, and being such an amazing hairstylist as well as uh, just a wonderful person to dialogue with when I'm there. You create a wonderful warm environment and I enjoy uh, coming to you. Uh, Carol's on. Hey Carol, thanks for joining the show. Listen, so we are talking about, we're talking about uh, storms. The twist on that is that we're talking about dating in the middle of the storm. So I want to hear what your thoughts are. This is Mindful Monday. Hey Vernon, thanks for joining the show. We're talking about storms. In particular, we're talking about weathering the storm and are you in a hurricane season of your life? But we're putting a twist on the conversation and we're specifically talking about dating in the middle of a storm, right? Is that a good thing to do? Is it a bad thing to do? Should we date? What if we're in the middle of the storm and we, we're past the dating phase, but we're in a committed relationship and we're in the middle of the storm? Karen's on, thanks for joining the show, Karen. 
we're talking about dating in the middle of the storm. Why did I come up with that topic? Well, one, this is kind of hurricane season. So from a physiological, ecosystemic perspective, you know, we know that depending on what region you're living in, you're probably going to deal with a lot of storms, just like we did today, or just like the storms that are, that are happening in our region, right? And I left work early, Morgan and I, to come home because we thought it was going to be thunder and lightning. And we got a little bit of that, but it sort of passed. So that was kind of cool because it cooled down. But what if the storm that you're in lasts longer than you anticipated? What if the storm that you're in you didn't anticipate at all. In fact, you got blindsided and didn't see it coming. Yet it collides with your dating season, right? Because we all have seasons. Now we live in a region where we have four seasons. We have summer, where it's hot as blazes. We have fall, which I really, really like because you can kind of, you know, um, put on layers and it's, the leaves are changing. It's really pretty. And then you have winter, which is not my favorite season. Uh, because it's just cold and I don't like the cold weather. And then we have spring, which I actually like because the leaves are coming back out and you know we're starting to anticipate what it's gonna look like for summer. So those are the four seasons in this region. But what if, I mean, we, we do have seasons in our life, right? We have our early childhood development season and then we have young adult season and then we have midlife season and then we have uh, later in life season. And uh, my pastor actually taught, calls it the four quarters, right? Your first quarter, zero to 20, your second quarter, 21 to 40, your third quarter, 41 to 60, your fourth quarter, 61 to 80. And then if you make it to 81 and over, you're in turn overtime. What does that mean? You kind of won the game. You, you won. If you get to overtime, win, lose, or draw, you basically have won, right? That means that you've had a good portion of health. You have your mind, body, and spirit. You've been able to maybe do some things that you intended or you set out to do, uh, and you've developed relationships. I got to tell you that most people that I talk to when they get to end of life, because I do work with a lot of families at Faith Inc. Uh, around end of life scenarios, whether it's the family members that are left behind uh, and they're mourning or grieving the loved one, or whether it's someone who actually knows that they're ill and they are transitioning. I work with them as well, and not. There's not one person that has ever told me that they wanted to work harder, they wanted to make more money. When you ask them, like, what did you want in your life and did you do everything you needed to do and did you face storms? Of course, most people say yes. They face storms, ups, downs, you know, uh, highs, lows, peaks and valleys. And yet most people will say they wish that they had spent more time with their families. They more, wish that they had had more fun. They wish that they had had more work-life balance. Um, they wish that may, they may have given themselves another opportunity to fall in love because a lot of times what happens is if we've fallen in love and we felt like we lost, maybe we got hurt uh, in the process, maybe there's been a divorce, maybe there's been a death, maybe there's just been a breakup. Uh, if those things have happened, sometimes we're not as likely to want to do it again. We don't want to touch the stove another time, so to speak, and get burned again. And so we tend to, you know, keep our vulnerability close to the chest, keep our heart closed. The problem with that is that when you keep other people out, guess what? You keep yourself in, right? You keep yourself locked in. And so we tend to want to have relationships, but not necessarily be willing to do what it takes, which is to be vulnerable. You really can't have full, true intimacy and authenticity uh, and really deep love if you're not willing to take the risk to be vulnerable. So the question is, if you're in the middle of a storm, right? And Vern is on, Karen's on, Mike is on, thanks for joining the show. Who else is on? Karen says, yes, 105 is not my season. I get it, I get it. I'd rather have the hot than the cold, but it's a lot to stay cool. Karen says, I'm loving my season right now. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Um, Nicole's on, my niece Nicole. Tell me how my beautiful great niece Lumpkins, we call her Lumpkins Jojo, is doing in the heat. Um, Dr. Dr. Gail is on as well. Uh, so I want to hear from you and I want to have this dialogue. By the way, let people know that we're on. We are in a dialogue, not a monologue. And I want you guys to share this, text somebody, DM them, let them know we're on this platform. This platform is for you. Give me the thumbs up. Give me some smiley faces, some hearts. If you're feeling the conversation and you think that it's beneficial to other people. 
we are talking about the season, right? The, the storm. And if you're in the hurricane season of your life, that's number one. And it can be good or bad. Sometimes hurricanes are meant to do something. Remember last week I said they're meant to constrict us. Her, uh, seasons or storms are meant to constrict us, correct us, connect us. And sometimes they are meant to cost us something. We need we give up something when we're in those storms. However, if you are in a hurricane, if you're in a storm, if you're in a pretty pretty tumultuous season, are you dating in the middle of your storm? Are you planning to date in the middle of your storm? What does that mean, right? A lot of times when we're in the middle of the storm, we are not as stable as we would like to be. So is that really a good time to date? Have you learned some things from your dating process that you can use in the next stage of your dating process? Because you all know that dating is a process of elimination. And the reason why I really wanted to talk about this tonight is because yesterday when um, Morgan and I were hanging out, that was our downtime, our Sunday, to just kind of hang out with each other. We had worked hard all week. We went for a walk. Then we got breakfast. We, uh, you know, we went to run some errands. And then I came home and took a nap, and they worked, and then he cooked for me um, a beautiful dinner and a lot of feedback in um, our chat was about people that wanted partnership and I see that a lot in the practice people want partnership we're not born on a desert island most people desire companionship sometimes the companionship though comes with a price and we have to sort of ask ourselves are we ready are you ready? Or is it a good time to date? Is it a good time to develop a partnership with someone? What is it that you're willing to give up if you do to develop a partnership? If you do date, and again, it's the process of elimination, but it also determines for one if they meet somebody that's a good enough fit to take it to the next level. And then the goal is to make sure that you are having a love affair with yourself so that you don't bring the baggage from your previous relationships into the next relationship. Because the truth is, if you're not over your ex, you can't move on to your next. I'm going to say that one more time. That's kind of a drop the mic statement. If you're not over your ex, you can't move on to your next. And I think I read, well, I read a uh, post earlier today. It was on my friend Charlie's uh, page. And it said something like most people are in therapy because they are dealing with people who refuse to be in therapy. I think that's how it went. And that's in some ways true because a lot of people that come to therapy for, for relationship issues, a lot of times it's because they've been through some storms in their previous relationships and they're working towards their own healing because they recognize that if they're not over their ex, they can't move on to their next. And they also recognize that it's not cool to make somebody else cash, write the check that they didn't cash uh, or, or cash the check that they didn't write. I, I said that the wrong way. It's not cool to have other people cash a check that they didn't write, meaning why make somebody else pay for the drama and the trauma that somebody in your past caused you? Why not work on that? So that's what I mean by thinking about what storm you're in. Are you in a storm that is costing you? Are you in a storm that's constricting you? Are you in a storm that's connecting you? Are you in a storm that cost you something? And then what are you supposed to learn from those stor that particular storm so that you don't carry the negative drama and trauma into the next relationship? Uh, Lou is on, Lisa's on, hey Lisa, uh, Marcel is on, Nikki is on. Thanks guys for joining the show. I asked you to do just one thing for me, STLC share tag like and comment because this is a dialogue not a monologue it's meant for someone else as well even if you don't catch the live uh it if it's archived then tell somebody else about it i want to know from you i want to this is mindful mondays that means that we spend some time thinking about what's on our mind right um, and being mindful being thoughtful being considerate uh, and sometimes being a little analytical and yeah a little funny with regards to the subject matter, uh, there was a couple things. There were a couple things that I put in terms of the hot topics uh, that I thought would be interesting to talk about. Which is that because we've been experiencing a heat wave, experiencing a heat wave, what's the fallout? What is the fallout 
from a heat wave. I think about like a lot of times when we're in the midst of a heat wave, you want to go into the air conditioner, you want the fan, you want to take off your clothes, uh, you want to like you want to try to relieve yourself from the hot flash that you're experiencing in this heat wave, right? But if it is a heat wave in your relationship, whether you're dating the person or whether you're in a deep, long-term, committed relationship, if you are in a heat wave, meaning that the relationship has turned up, there's um, maybe some stressors that have gotten elevated, you are in a financial uh, position where things aren't going as well as you would like them to go, whether some, somebody gets sick and you didn't intend to be a caretaker, but you find yourself being the caretaker nevertheless, or someone lost their job and you didn't intend to be the breadwinner and you become the breadwinner nevertheless. What do we do when the heat gets turned up in our relationships or there's a pivotal storm that we didn't anticipate and now we're really not the best version of ourselves? That's important, right? Because we'd like to think, we'd like to think that we're always the, um, this amazing person to uh, be in a relationship with. But the truth is, and I'm going to go on and be transparent because we believe here at Faith Think and Connections Matter that it's important to, be, um, to have truth, trust, and transparency, which leads to transformational breakthroughs. So I'm going to go on and be honest to say, probably Morgan will sign in. He's upstairs right now listening in. So probably agree with this, that I am not always the best version of myself when I'm tired, when I'm fatigued, when I'm not feeling well, when I'm overwhelmed. I, just like anyone else, even though I'm a therapist, sometimes have to go dig deep if I'm in the midst of a storm. And yet the cool thing is that my partner understands me, and so if I need a little bit of space, one of the things I said this morning, which I actually was not the best version of myself this morning, uh, and had thought that Morgan had done something that I asked him not to do. And I didn't accuse him, but I did ask him, you know, in a very stern way, did he do it? Um, and he got a little offended and I had to correct. I had to course correct very quickly and apologize and say, you know, I'm going to, you know, when I'm a little anxious or stressed, I'm going to qualify that by saying, you know, I need to need a little space. Uh, don't take this the wrong way if I step back because I don't want to project onto you. Well, here's the thing. When we are in the midst of our storms, right, if we're not the best version of ourselves, then oftentimes that impacts the relationships that we're in. And quite frankly, if we're choosing to date when we're in the midst of a storm, a heat wave, if you will, and we're not the best version of ourselves, then sometimes the representative that shows up doesn't necessarily demonstrate who we really fully are. Then we wonder why the relationship didn't work or why that relationship didn't elevate to where we wanted to, to elevate. But we have to really kind of take a step back and realize that perhaps maybe we weren't doing our own work. Maybe we weren't addressing the real issues that came about as a result of the storm that we were in that then moved us to an unhealthy place and then subsequently made us not necessarily the best person to be in the relationship. Uh, Lou says dating during the storm does not always work, um, can show you what you need to do to improve yourself. Oh, it can show you what you need. Absolutely. Um, here's the thing. I don't necessarily advise dating in the middle of the storm. However, here's the thing. Sometimes you started the dating process, you're continuing the dating process. The storm happens because how many of you all know, and hey, Ernie, he's joined. Thanks for joining the show. Um, how many of you all know that Storms can happen uh, unbeknownst to ourselves. They can happen really quickly. They can happen all of the blue. They can blindside us. And so we might be dating and then we, we start liking someone or we start enjoying their company and we really are expecting or anticipating that continued companionship. And then the storm happens, right? The bottom falls out. We lose our jobs. Somebody dies. Somebody gets sick. We get depressed, right? And so should we then step out of that relationship or... Do we hope that that person will understand and we can continue on in that relationship to the other side? So here's the other thing that I really wanted to talk about. Lord, no, um, absolutely not that. 
It's upstairs funny. Lord, no, absolutely not the best version. Laugh out loud. Y'all know when um, when somebody's saying something under my um, name, that's Morgan. Uh, so that's his comment about me not being the best version of myself. Uh, but what I was saying about the dating process is that, and, and doing it in the midst of a storm or when things have heated up, is yes, yeah, storms are meant to teach us some things about ourselves, and that's kind of what Lou was saying. And sometimes we can use those things that it's teaching us in order to go to the next level, both in our personal or professional lives and even in our relationship lives. Uh, but last week, I wrote a, uh, a post about joy. And I started thinking about that post because what is the opposite of joy? I don't really deal with happiness too much. I think nobody's happy 24 hours a day. Happiness often is based on what's happening, right? So it's, you know, it's kind of fleeting, if you will. But joy is kind of an internal process that we have to access that doesn't necessarily pivot or doesn't kind of get derailed simply because of the things that are happening. But the opposite of joy, I think, is anger, right? And a lot of times anger gets masked because it's really a secondary emotion. The primary emotion underneath anger, the initial emotion usually is pain, sadness, disappointment, frustration, all of those vulnerable emotions. And then anger sort of covers that up. And then as a result, when we're going through the storm, whatever that storm is, whatever that stressor is, sometimes what comes up is that anger and that resentment and that bitterness that causes us to demonstrate a different side of ourselves when we're in the dating process that doesn't serve us very well. So we could be just wonderful person that is really could be a great partner for someone. But if we're angry and bitter and uh, resentful, um, if we're bitter, not better, then that's actually what people see in that particular dating phase. And sometimes we don't even have to say a word. Sometimes people see it, it's written all over our face. We're not smiling. We don't feel good about ourselves. We're in a, we're in a storm, right? And so sometimes if that is the case, maybe we need to dial it back a little bit and perhaps we need to really begin the process of doing our own work in order to not present an unhealthy version of ourselves. Karen says the representative will never make it through the storm. However, it's an eye opener. It's your heading attention uh, and not, let's see, if you're heading attention and not caught up. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not a little fuzzy on the last part, but I definitely get the first part, which is that sometimes your representative doesn't make it through the storm because you have to go deeper and do the work in order to really fully understand what you're growing through. I don't think you pe people just go through a storm. I don't think they just get over a storm. I think people grow through the storm and there's some joy on the other side of that storm. You just have to traverse it and then begin to fully understand how strong you are, uh, how resilient you are to have made it through whatever that particular storm is. Danny's the one. Hey, Danny, thanks for joining the show. Staying pure during the relationship makes it easier to see and walk away. No soul ties. I absolutely agree. However, you know me as a therapist, I can't, it's no, there's no judgment on my part. I have to really meet people where they are. I do believe that sometimes if you get more entangled in a relationship while you're in the midst of a storm, sometimes that creates more drama and it doesn't serve the relationship very well. And sometimes the relationship will crash and burn before it's ever gotten started because you really weren't healthy to begin with. So subsequently, it didn't really help that you move forward. You have to do your work. Kevin's on. Hey, Kevin. Ambrose, thanks for joining. Stephanie Barnhill by Kenya Sisters on. Abayomi. Hey, Obami. Thanks for joining. Uh, Stephanie said, good evening. So we, if you're just joining uh, the show, this is the Ask Dr. RG Courageous Conversations Connect series here. We give you great content. We give you uh, courageous conversations that connect. Uh, in order for us to have a dialogue, not a monologue. Uh, if you like this content, I ask you to share it. Share, share, share. STLC, share, tag, like, and comment so that somebody else, text them, DM them, let them know we're on here, and let them know we're talking about storms. This is a great night to have this conversation, at least in Philly, because it is kind of storming. Well, I'm exaggerating. Right now, it's not storming. It just, it did storm. There was some thunder. There was some lightning. But it, it, um, 
went by really, really quickly and it cooled things down. Um, that's the kind of cool thing about storms as well. Our emotional, our physical, our familial, our relational storms, sometimes they come because life is crazy, um, things are chaotic, um, there's a lot of drama, there's a lot of toxins, and quite frankly, sometimes our emotional and our relational storms, they are clearing. They sometimes are meant to clear some folk out of our lives to create some space for us to actually be who we are designed to be and to be with who we're designed to be with. And sometimes we can't reach that full potential uh, and we can't actually be in the relationship that we're designed to be in if we got all kinds of crazy drama jumping off that we cannot really be our best selves. We certainly are not the best versions of ourselves when we're in the midst of those kinds of storms. Uh, Karen says, paying attention, not heading attention. Absolutely darn autocorrect. <laughs> That's okay. No worries about the autocorrect. It happens to the best of us. Michael Burke is on. Hey, Michael, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for joining the show. Um, yes, and Morgan said, tell Marcos we said hello. I agree. I agree. Hey, Michael. So we are talking about storms and um, I had some hot topics that I wonder what you all thought about. Uh, if you thought about these things, falling out from a heat wave, what's your fallout, right? Think about your life and when there's been something that heated up in your life, whether your relationship heated up in a negative way or whether you were in the workplace, let's say, and things started heating up where it wasn't the best environment for you to be in. What did you do? How did you reconcile that? How did you understand what was happening? Did you internalize it and take it on as it's all your fault? Did you project and project it onto someone else as if things heating up in your life was all somebody else's fault? Or did you process it in a way that allowed that pain of things heating, heating up to turn into power? What did you do with that? And then we're talking about storms that create a paradigm shift. You know, I kind of like this. It's kind of a play on, a vote on words when they say shifts happen. Really, it's a play on words because what they really mean is shit happens, right? Um, but we, we're going to say for the purpose of clinical terminology that shifts happen. But the truth is when shit happens, when shit hits the fan, literally and figuratively, when it feels like all hell is breaking loose, it feels like things are intersecting all the negative things that could possibly happen in your life, maybe with the finances and the job and the relationship and perhaps maybe some stressors, which we know mind, body, and spirit is all connected. So when we are at our highest levels of stress, that's when our cortisol levels usually elevate and that usually impacts our immune system or our autoimmune system. That then allows the free radicals to go crazy in our bodies. And as a result, that creates more and more problems. So when shit happens, paradigm shifts happen. And we need to stay woke and pay attention to those things that are happening in our lives because the storm may in fact be an actual clearing. It may be that there's a calm before the storm, but that the storm is actually meant to clear some stuff out for us to actually elevate. Sometimes we can't elevate if we're taking all of the bags and all of the drama and all of the toxic relationships with us. We can't take them to the next level. Sometimes some people are not meant to go to the next level. And then I say in terms of hot topics, stay woke after the storm, right? It's really, really important to stay woke because if there's a clearing in your life, if folks have left your life or departed your life for a reason, if you've experienced some breakups in your life and those were storms, it could be that part of staying awake is to, or staying woke is to learn what that, that lesson was meant to teach you, right? And in the lesson or in the mess, there's a message that gets emitted or emerges from that. In the test, there's ultimately a testimony that emerges from that. And then that storm actually becomes a blessing, not just to you, but a blessing to someone else, right? Because the truth is, and you all know I said, I've said this before, people are watching, people are paying attention to the world 
you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. So someone is watching how you traverse through your storm. Your storm. They're paying attention and they want to know, are you going to make it? Are you going to get to the other side? Are you going to traverse through that storm with joy on the inside so that you actually are able to have a testimony on the other side of it and say, guess what? I don't look like what I've been through, right? And as you are able to traverse through whatever you are growing through, not just going through, but growing through, there's some amazing blessings on the other side of that because there's a level of abundance that is available to all of us. And all the universe requires is that we open ourselves up that we not close ourselves up because this is also what happens in storms. We're talking about aftermath. I can tell you personally and professionally that I see a lot of people that when they grow through a storm, right, they close up, right? Just like a turtle that, um, and how many of you will go on record and be transparent and say that in some ways you li you live in, you're living your life like a turtle. You know what a turtle is? A turtle is someone that pulls in their little feet and pulls in their little head and then they have this hard shell. And then on the inside, they're soft and warm and fuzzy and they're able to be vulnerable and show someone their best selves. But on the outside, they're hard and callous like a turtle. Now the purpose of a turtle, if you've seen some really big turtles and they're very, very fascinating. They move slow and methodical, but they have this hard shell that blends in with the ecosystem to protect them from the elements that would seek to devour them. And I feel like that's somehow, sometimes how we are. When we've grown through some storms, we put on this hard shell or this hard callus and this, this uh, really strong exterior, especially women in particular uh, and, and black women specifically because a lot of what we've grown through is really difficult. And so as a result, we say, I want a relationship. I want someone to love me the way that I desire and deserve to be loved. And this is why we date. And yet, as a result of those storms that we've been through, we don't really let people in. We show them the, the hard part of us, that callous part of us, like the turtle that's drawn the legs in and the head in, and they can't see the other part of us. Tell me what your thoughts are about that. Melvin's on, hey Melvin, Lisa's on, thanks for joining the show, Cindy's on, Nicole is on, Dr. Gail, Stephanie. Let me read some of your comments to see what your thoughts are. Uh, I wanna go far enough back. I don't wanna miss anybody. So-so mm. laser doc, that's what by me said. Thank you by me. Uh, and let's see. Yeah, if you have a question that you wanna state anonymously, uh, Morgan puts that out there. Please send it to contact us at connectionsmatterllc.com. Uh, that's how we get sick. That's what uh, Stephanie said. Uh, Lisa said, I so needed to hear all of this. Yes, yes, yes. Um, that's music to my ears. That's music to ears, 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 ears. Music to my ears uh, when people say, I so needed to hear this because for you all, you all know that usually I'm working throughout the day. I try to plan pretty well for some of these talks, but a lot of it organically comes from my, my heart, right? Yes, intellectually, I hope that it makes sense. I hope that I'm speaking in a clear and concise way so that we engage in this dialogue that helps in the healing, right? Because I ultimately believe, you know, we say at Faith, at Faith the Ink and Connections Matter, we ask the question, are you helping to harm or healing the hurt? So my, my goal is to heal the hurt with the words and with these conversations in this platform. Uh, but I never know who's going to be on. I never know who I'm connecting with. Uh, so I... Um, call on the divine spirit. I call on my source to speak through me. Y'all know my mother used to say, open your mouth and God will speak for you. And so I draw on that on a daily basis. So I'm so glad that it, it's resonating with you. Sometimes the storm is a, is a symptom of a greater challenge. That's what Abayami said, absolutely. And Nicole said, yes, I was just about to say that. People are watching how you handle your storms, absolutely. 
and so glad we were able to provide a space for the conversation. Dr. Gale said, actually, Dr. RG, I found it difficult to engage a client in therapy to identify the problem of ruminating about the past relationships that were getting in the way of connecting with the person who wanted to move beyond the past relationship. There wasn't a, uh, let me get back then. There wasn't any connection with the past relationship of the one individual. I will call the person the recipient of delusions of jealousy. I interpreted it as constant rep repetitive accusations of attachment to the past partner, or psychological abuse, which was getting in the way, let's see, which was getting away with the progress in the current relationship. I suggested that the recipient um, was reinforcing the thoughts about past meaningless relationships to just stop reinforcing the other person, but by not um, engaging in, uh, get, engaging the person as it was emotionally upsetting. Uh, draw a line and stop or could be a time to move on from the projections and deal with the building of current feelings about improving the relationship. Stop the psychological abuse because it's not, um, because I'm not being ready to move on, uh, move past the assumptions and how the recipient felt. I agree. So I want to unpack that because that was a lot. Let's um, get some other comments and I'm going to follow that, get back up on that. Uh, Danny said, this is my first time logging into your program. It looks as if it may be a new addiction. <laughs> well, thank you, Danny. I appreciate it. Hopefully it's a positive one. Um, I'll just join the discussion as frequently as possible in the future. H Bison in the house. H.U. Love. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Vicky's on. Jamel's on. Yousef. Hey, Yousef. Thanks for joining the show. Um, yes, you are a divine heart uh, healer. Thank you so much. Karen said, I'm definitely a turtle at times. Then I snap out of it and remember that I'm living um, for God and not people because people will always disappoint human nature. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me unpack something that, that Dr. Gale said because I think it's really, really important and something that Nicole said as well. Uh, and Simi, thanks for joining the show. By the way, if you guys are just logging on tonight, we are in um, our 32nd week of the Ask Dr. RG Courageous Conversations Connect series. Uh, we give you content that's trending, but also content where we can have a dialogue, not a monologue, and talk about courageous conversations that connect. And so tonight is our Mindful Mondays. It's no different. We are talking about all month uh, weathering the storm. Are you in a hurricane season of your life? And I chose specifically tonight to call, talk about whether we date in the middle of a storm and what does that really mean? And so interesting enough, um, one of the things that Nicole said was that people are watching. They're watching and they're paying attention all the time. And so they're assessing how you're going to do this. And the blessing in that is that sometimes when we're in the midst of a storm, we're not, we're more transparent than we realize. And so subsequently, people know, they may not know the details because we have the right to share certain information. Now, all information is not for everyone. And so sometimes it's just private information. We choose not to share it. Uh, that's, there's a difference between privacy and secrecy, right? However, there are times when we may choose to share what we're growing through. And at that time, people are sort of paying attention to, all right, how are they going to handle this? This is a big one, right? Are they going to access the joy even in the midst of the storm? Are they going to enjoy the journey? Are they going to see the faith walk that they are embarking on and know that there is power at the end of their pain? Are they, and quite frankly, that blessing of how they traverse, how we traverse through that particular storm um, certainly is a blessing for someone else that gives them hope, right? Love, light, truth, and accountability, it equals hope and freedom. I want to say that again. Love, light, truth, and accountability, kind of how we govern our lives, how we show light to others, how we love one another, but also how we speak our truth and hold ourselves accountable in others. That leads to hope and freedom. Uh, as it relates to what Dr. Gale said, you know, I always say, as we said in the beginning of the show, sometimes if we're not over our ex, we cannot move on to our next. And I won't want to go on record to say and be very transparent. First of all, I'd never go to a therapist that didn't have their own therapist. That's for number one. So for those of you who may think you need therapy or you may be interested in therapy, even if you choose to come to Faith Inc. Uh, for therapy, right? Know that at Faith Inc., which stands for Family and Individual Therapeutic Healing, we're there every day doing therapy. I, yours truly, I'm doing the clinical work along with an intern of mine. And 
Um, one of the things that I, I say to many of the students of training all uh, over the many years is you can't absolutely do this level of deep work if you don't have your own therapist on speed dial. Uh, quite frankly, it's a little hypocritical to think that somebody should trust you or entrust you with their deepest dark secrets, with their with their pain, with their disappointment, uh, with their issues, and yet you're not uh, doing the necessary work that you need to be to do to be healthy. So when I think about people who are really unable to move on, I think about uh, an experience I had with my therapist many many years ago when I went back to her after a, a breakup. Right, that was a storm for me. And after about six months, she said, okay, we're not going to talk about this person anymore, right? Uh, because we've exhausted why, this is way before I met my husband, but we've exhausted why this person is not a good fit for you, why, you know, he's maybe not, um, you know, didn't understand how great you were. I don't really want to talk about that anymore. Like, I get you want to talk about that. She was talking to me as the client. She said, but we really need to start talking about why it is that you wanted to be in a relationship with somebody who didn't want to be in a relationship with you. That's what we need to talk about. And it hit me like a ton of rick bricks because I was very much in some ways like Dr. Gail's client. I was reliving the pain of this relationship that didn't work out for me over and over and over again when I was going back to therapy and I wasn't really working on me doing the work. The role, the goal here, if you're in a storm or if you're dealing with issues, is you have to do your own work. You have to unpack those bags that may not necessarily be uh, the best bags ever, right? You know, uh, sometimes we try, this is what we do. We take our old baggage into a new relationship and we expect that new person to deal with our old bags. Quite frankly, that's like going on a vacation we used our clothes, we wore them or what have you, then we actually put them in a suitcase and then we took those same dirty clothes to another trip, right? That's kind of what it's like when we're not able to address our own issues, do the necessary work to work on our own healing so that not that we're perfect people, but that we have begun to understand how we found ourselves in those particular relationships that didn't serve us very well and then we open ourselves up to the possibility and the opportunity that if we do our work, then we can actually offer someone in a relationship our best version of ourself. Sometimes we have a negative one, but we can offer somebody the best version of ourselves. And therapy can help us to do that uh, in a healthy way, in a good way. Tom is on, hey Tom, hey Miss Carolyn. Carolyn, Miss Carolyn's on, thanks for joining the show. Um, it's the power that gets us through the pain. Absolutely, Stephanie. And uh, Jamel said, you cannot pour new wine into an old bottle, right? Absolutely. So, so true. Raj is on. Hey, Raj, thanks for joining the show. Mark is on. If you guys are just joining the show, this is the Ask Dr. RG Courageous Conversations Connect series. Uh, Yusef, is, Yusef is on. Vicki Wickwood is on. Uh, so we got HU in the house is on as well. And we're talking about storms. What about yours? What about somebody that you know? Do you, what do you think about dating in the middle of a storm? I know what I think about it. I don't always think it's a good idea to date in the middle of a storm. What I think is a good idea is to get therapy or a spiritual advisor or do your own healing work so that you begin to understand in some ways how you found yourself maybe in the relationship, the same relationship, just a different person. Have y'all ever had that experience? Am I the only one that had that experience before I got married where sometimes I ended up in the same kind of relationship? The person just had a different name. But by and large, they still were emotionally unavailable. They still didn't treat me as well as I deserved to be treated. Uh, they, they, you know, so, so then I had to really unpack that and not project onto them, right? So sometimes you point the finger that way, you got three fingers pointing back at you. I had to really unpack why it is that I was drawn to the same kind of person. Why did I not think so highly of myself to the extent that I then would find someone like a needle in a haystack that couldn't be available to me in the way that I desired and deserved to be? 
that was my work to do, right? And when I realized, or I began to do my work, and I wondered, I, I realized, hmm, I'm the common denominator in this. What about you, right? Those persons who are interested in dating, and I actually think next month we're going to do, uh, we're going to, I don't know what we'll entitle the month. Uh, I think maybe something like New Beginnings because August we're having fun, but we're also thinking about gearing up for September. So I might entitle that. And I'll sort of begin to unpack some of the things that I think that we, uh, men and women who are open to this dating process um, and partnering up, some of the healing work that I think needs to happen in order to be the best version of yourself. Uh, because sometimes we sabotage being in a partnership because we're unwilling to change. The shit happens and then we're not open to the shift happening, right? In order to change the dynamic, set our intentions, uh, change our energy. And then so, so as a result, we are really pretty much trying to get in a new relationship with the same self, right? The person who's been through all this drama and is unable able and sometimes even unwilling to live our best life on purpose. And that's really the goal, no matter what stage of your life you're in, it's to live your best life on purpose so that you make a difference in the life of, your, of someone else and so that you make your mark uh, in the dash. Mother Waller's on. Hey, Mother Waller, thanks for joining the show. I haven't seen you in a while. It's, it's good to um, see that you're, you, you've hopped onto the platform. Uh, Siobhan is on. Hey, Siobhan. Uh, Lisa said, yes, the common denominator portion is really hard to deal with. Absolutely. Uh, I don't really think, to be honest with you, that most of us want to look at what it is that we are doing, right? I don't think we do. Like, and, and no shade, but it's hard to take the mirror, look at ourselves, and say we're the common denominator, right, Lisa? Right? And these are the things we need to work on so that we redirect our energy, open ourselves up to uh, a new norm. Quite frankly, it's easier to point the finger. It's easier. When in my relationship, the previous relationship that guys I was talking about, it was easier. My, if, if I hadn't had an amazing therapist shout out, I'm going to tell y'all, well, I'm, yeah, I'll tell y'all who my therapist was because she's amazing. Um, Marilyn Johnson, she was, she's awesome. I've referred many, many people to her, and uh, we refer back and forth to one another. And Marilyn Johnson, I may even try to have her on one time as an as an interview. Uh, she she wouldn't she wouldn't let me get away with it. In other words, right? If you're a good therapist, you don't let your clients get away with kind of BSing you uh, and only placing the blame externally, right? Therapy is not a blame game. You know, we shouldn't be blaming and shaming each other because that's more pain, right? But at the same time, a good therapist is going to hold you accountable for how it is that you are sabotaging yourself and how it is that you are preventing yourself from getting the things that you say that you want, things that you say you desire, and things that you say you deserve. And whatever that is, quite frankly, it's available to us in abundance. That's how the universe has set it up. That's how God has, has set it up. And if that is a relationship, you can win at that, right? Uh, I was talking a little bit earlier about what does it look like to win? What does it look like to win? Quite frankly, many of us can be in the middle of a storm. We can traverse through that storm and we can win anyway because our history is meant to inform us, but our history doesn't have to define us, right? So the fact that I, in transparency, was in a negative relationship that didn't serve me very well. I won't say the person's name because that's not fair, right? Um, but it didn't serve me very well. I didn't have to stay in that. And you don't have to stay in that either. But sometimes what we'll do is we become our own secondary perpetrators. That's a name, that's, that's a term that I coined a, a while ago when I was the servant leader for the Sexual Abuse Survivors Ministry. And I would talk about the fact that sometimes we get hurt and wounded and it's through no fault of our own. We're in a relationship, we're in a storm, it hurts, it ends, we, get a, we have a breakup. And then, for whatever reason, we begin to internalize that it was our fault. We play, play the blame game, or we shame game, or we uh, are embarrassed, or 
whatever. And subsequently, we blame ourselves and then we become the secondary perpetrator, meaning that now we're creating our own self-induced storm, right? That, that doesn't allow us to fully experience and embrace the beauty of the joy that is available to us, right? That doesn't mean that we are not sad, that we had a breakup or we had a storm. Doesn't mean that we're all the way through it. Sometimes we can be sort of in the middle of it and we can be growing through it, but we can be elevated even in spite of that particular storm. If we understand it, the role that it played in our lives, and then we begin to work through it in a way that allows us to move to another level, to live our best lives. Jamel says, same book, same traits as old, uh, old friends, new chapter, different person. Absolutely. Um, that's why examining yourself, Stephanie says you have to examine yourself. Absolutely. And that is not easy, right? It's not easy. Give me some thumbs up, some smiley faces, some hearts for those of you that are still on a platform. That's why it's not easy, right, to do your own self-inventory. If you've ever been in the rooms of a, uh, a Narcotics Anonymous or Alcoholics Anonymous, Anonymous uh, what they say is you got to do your own self-inventory, right? Uh, it's easy to place, place the blame on someone else. It's easy to say, I'm not living my best life because I don't have enough money. Thank you for your smiley faces, your thumbs up and your hearts. I appreciate it, right? It's easy to say that, you know, because I had a crappy childhood, I've been on my own since I was 15, that this is why I'm not living my best life. But really, how long, how long are we going to use that as an excuse? Sometimes we have to put the excuses aside, boundary them or bracket them, and then we have to say, all right, this all happened. It wasn't good. I didn't like it. It didn't feel good. I didn't deserve it. I didn't cause it. It's not my fault that it happened, that bad relationship, that breakup, that divorce, the person dying, me being a widow or a single person for a long time or not having the, uh, children. All those possibilities are things that could happen to us and quite frankly, happen through us. But the question becomes, even in the midst of the storm, what are you going to do about it? What will you do in the aftermath? What will you do in order to help yourself to get to the next level? Phyllis is on. Hey, Phyllis, thanks for joining. It's, the, it, it's what's next. And how do you then take all of it and harness it into love and light truth and accountability that ultimately equals hope and freedom. That all is all available, right? And quite frankly, sometimes that pain into power <coughs> is, is powerful, right? Because there's a process. Sometimes we just want to snap our fingers and we want it to be over. But there's a process by which we then get to the other side. And then when we do get to the other side of that power, Man, is it powerful, right? I often think about like the, um, you know, Wizard of Oz, right? There was a process for them to get to the wizard. They found out that the wizard wasn't all that in the very beginning, like at the, at the very end, in the final analysis, he wasn't all that. However, they, the message of the Wizard of Oz, right? If you all are, you know, watch sometimes fairy tales and shows like that uh, when you were younger, the message was that we already, already had the gift, we already have the talent. We already have the skills. We already have the design for our lives. It's already inside of us. We came here with it. The goal is to not allow the world to beat you up and the relationships and the storms to, to like, you know, throw you around so much that you start believing that a good life, a great life is not available to you, an abundant life is not available to you. That's when the storm hasn't really served its purpose because at the end of the day, it's for a clearing. That is the goal of whatever storm you're in. It's for a clearing so that you can be open to love and abundance and wonderful professional opportunities. And if you wanna travel the world, whatever it is that you desire, as long as it's lined up with God's intent, you can have it. It is available to you. But our stinking thinking and our past experiences can block all of that if we don't allow ourselves to be open and free. 
and do our work. Velva's on. Hey, Velva. Thanks for joining the show. Dr. Gail's on. Uh, let's see. Morgan said, hey, crew, I've got a great idea. Um, if you find this information helpful, why not start a watch party? Okay, Morgan is encouraging guys to start, start a watch party. Uh, Dr. Gail says, my psychoanalyst answered a question about what could be jo holding me back from not being able to move past the one I was deeply romantically in a relationship with. And I was in love and he moved on and I couldn't. The therapist helped me by identifying my mental intrusive thoughts, emotional attachment, which is the strong attachment that would change over time. Uh, and I did. I have a greater appreciation of dating um, for dating couples who are stuck in a, obsessions of past relationships. Absolutely. You know, the thing about it is, uh, and that's a longer post I'm going to respond to a little bit later. Um, you know, the thing about past relationships that don't work out is that while the person has moved on and they are in another relationship and they're happy, perhaps, maybe they are, maybe they're not, who knows, right? But we're going to just assume that they're sleeping good, right? We're the ones that are obsessing about it sometimes or not able to sleep or not able to, you know, work or be productive. And that person's moved on. So I liken it to these earrings. These are my mom's earrings. I, I um, like to wear them to feel closer to her sometimes. And if I lost this earring, I would go looking for it because I feel like I, I would have felt like I lost it. But sometimes when it comes to relationships, we need to let it go. We need to assume that the relationship was not meant to be. Y'all ever remember that poem years ago that if it, um, if you love something, set it free. If it comes back to you, it's yours. If it doesn't, it was never meant to be. I used to have that on a poster on my wall uh, when I was a teenager. And I think though it's actually true that there are times when people move on and we experience breakups, whether it be friendships or love relationships, whether it be a job or, you know, some acquaintanceship. And, you know, if it was not meant to be a lifetime relationship, then it wasn't meant to be. There are some relationships that are really, truly seasonal relationships. They are meant to come into your life for a season, to teach you something. You are meant to teach them something. And that's it. The season is over, right? The problem is sometimes, as I often say, and this is what Rev used to say, my, uh, my pastor, uh, that sometimes we keep people way past their expiration date. And when we keep people past their expiration date, then we don't create a clearing for the persons that could be in our lives at the level that God is taking us to. And so it's just like anything else. If, if you drank milk and the expiration date said December 2018, and it's now July 2019, guess what's going to happen? Yep, you guessed it. You're going to get sick. So think about that from the perspective of keeping people in our lives in the midst of storms, uh, when it gets hot, when there's a heat wave, um, when there's a hurricane in our lives, when things happen. If they are really not intended to be in your life during that time, you've kept them in your life past their expiration date. Now, mind you, there are some people that are lifers. They are meant to come in your life and traverse through your life and you're meant to be in their life for the duration. you I mean, the goal here is to be discerning, to know the difference between who are your lifers and who are your seasonal people. And don't get it twisted. Don't make your lifers your seasonal people and get rid of them before you're supposed to, right? And don't make your seasonal people your lifers. Keeping them in your life and really, it was really time for them to move on or time for you to move on. Patrice is on. Hey, Patrice, thanks for joining the show. Uh, Lisa said, holding on. Um, past the expiration date also creates a toxic, toxic environment and experience. Absolutely. And so you want to know why you're arguing all the time. You want to know why you're not on one accord. You want to know why things are not congruent in that relationship. Sometimes it's because it was never meant to be extended to the time period that you're in the relationship. If you appreciate that, if that makes sense, or if you've got an experience that's similar to that, give me some thumbs up, some some hearts or some smiley faces. I'd like for you to STLC. You know, guys, I only ask you to do one thing on this platform. Share, share, share. Uh, STLC, share, tag, like, and comment. DM someone, text them, let them know that we're on. Uh, this is a platform that's for you. This is a platform that's for us. And quite frankly, even for me, 
I gain from this engagement, right? There are times when you guys are teaching me just like I'm teaching you, and we're having a dialogue, not a monologue. So share, tag, like, and comment. Let somebody else know, even if they don't see the live platform, maybe they'll see it in the archive, and maybe it'll resonate with them. If they're in the midst of a storm, or if they're dating in the midst of a storm, and that's not necessarily a good thing for them, perhaps maybe they need to realize that it's time for them to do their work, because they, perhaps are needing to work through and grow through something that they haven't addressed yet. And quite frankly, when we don't address stuff, when we don't deal with it, we don't manage it or fully understand it, then we expect for somebody else to write a check or cast a check that they didn't write, which is not fair. That's not fair at all. So tell me what your thoughts are about your storm. It's Monday night. This is Mindful Mondays. This is the Ask Dr. RG Courageous Conversations Connect series. Uh, we're here on Tuesday, or Tuesday is our Testimonial Tuesday, so I think Morgan put that in the chat. Uh, if you guys will uh, hit connect us at connectionsmatterllc.com, you can list the questions that you want us to talk about. Uh, you can also give your testimony uh, if this resonates for you, and we will talk about that on WIOW, which is our Work It Out Wednesdays. We really kind of unpack and deconstruct the conversation and just go deeper into it. And then, of course, on Thoughtful Thursdays, uh, I give you words of inspiration and mo uh, motivation to go to Freedom Fridays. For those of you who like this flat platform, or even if you guys are thinking about therapy yourself, give us a call at uh, 789 or 215-789-6999, or my email is drrg uh, at, what is my email? Ah, Morgan's going to laugh at me. Uh, drrg at connectionsmatterllc.com. I've got so many different emails. Uh, or you can reach out to uh, me through the website, uh, www at drrgconnects.com. That's if you have a question, if you are interested in therapy, you all know at Faith Inc. That stands for Family and Individual Therapeutic Healing. Uh, we believe in healing families one relationship at a time uh, and transforming individuals, couples, and corporations one courageous conversation at a time. Uh, even tomorrow, we are going to, we, we go to Enon, Morgan and I, and my assistant Lucy, and we do spiritual mindful meditation, uh, mindfulness and meditation with the children from Camp Adonine. They're, it's awesome. It is amazing that these children are learning the skills and the tools to reconnect themselves, to recenter themselves, uh, to set their intentions, to calm themselves, and all these skills they're going to be able to use when they go to school. Because the truth is that when we step outside of our homes on any given day, uh, we can experience anger invitations, uh, we can experience drama and trauma. And we need the right skills, the right tools in order to keep going in a healthy way. And so we're teaching kids to how to do that. And we're going to probably try to uh, do a, some, some uh, master classes in terms of teaching others how to do that as well. Shauna's on. Hey, Shauna. Uh, thanks for joining the show. Uh, so listen, this has been great. Uh, and if you guys are interested, again, please reach out. Please give your testimonial, testimonies on Testimonial Tuesday. Uh, it's been a wonderful uh, mindful Mondays. I'm going to sign off now because I, I think we pretty much exhausted a little bit of what we were talking about. But again, if you want to continue to talk about this, sign on on our um, Wednesday, WIOW. All right. Have a beautiful evening, uh, beautiful Monday night on purpose from my heart to yours. I'm Dr. RG, your global relationship transformationalist. Have a great night. Love you guys. Nothing you can do about it. Thanks for joining the platform. Bye bye.